EC debug LED CPU VGA light goes on and the fans turn off once Windows starts up and CPU fan is loose slash out of place. Now, I'm gonna need a bit more context than that. So I followed up by a messenger and they clarified that the system still boots into Windows, but when this happens, the fans turn off for some reason and the easy debug lights flash on. This here is that viewer's arguably broken gaming PC. I mean, if the fans aren't spinning, it's gonna break if it hasn't already, that's no good. And I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure where we're even going to start. This is a slightly older system, Ryzen 5 1400, so first gen Ryzen. It does have an RX 580 in it as well, which uh, is sagging just a bit. And if you couldn't already tell, this is very clearly a pre-built PC from CyberPower PC. I do think this will be an interesting one, and I hope you'll stay with me. If you're planning your next PC build, then consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of your OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. So let me get this straight. This powers on, it loads into Windows, Normally that's where we'd say job well done, but the issue happens according to the owner after we log into Windows, the fan stops spinning and then we get, we get a flashing LED, debug LED of some sort. That um, is interesting. That's a new one. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think of like where, I mean, I guess we just fire it up and kind of go from there. I honestly have no idea where where this one's headed. So we're gonna send it full beans. Just see what happens. Observe and report. And so far, things look fine. Uh, a couple dead LEDs in this red LED strip running around the uh, perimeter of the case. All the fans so far are spinning. We do have our post. So that's good. Is it, is it gonna load? Yep, it is loading into Windows as well. Hmm. Hmm, this is taking an awfully long time to load. I wonder if the boot drive is a hard disk drive. This is definitely, this definitely smells of a hard disk drive, I will say. And we do have a hard disk drive. Uh oh, oh boy. Yeah, so we have a hard disk drive and that's it. It is a hard disk drive for a boot drive. Uh, maybe we can fix that. It depends on what we're gonna have to do here to get whatever supposedly is wrong with this addressed. I don't know, we're, we've loaded into Windows. Fans are still spinning. Maybe we have to sign in. I suppose while we're here, I'll check the CPU cooler. She was saying that uh, it, oh. Oh, okay, let's, let's, let's turn this off. Yeah, so it looks like this locking arm, which is very similar to what AMD uses in their stock coolers, is a bit bent out of shape, and as a result, it wasn't latching onto the bracket surrounding the socket below. Yeah, that uh, that arm there is a bit worse for wear. Now, I'll be honest, this cooler, while it is small, should be plenty for a Ryzen 5 1400, especially if we're not doing any major overclocking, and we won't be with the board that's in here. So I'm not really inclined to like throw in a Dark Rock 5 or Dark Rock Pro 5 from Be Quiet. I think we can actually bend these little arms back into shape and uh, just repaste. That should massively help temperatures. We're gonna clean up this old and kind of crusty thermal compound to start. And I don't see a need to remove the CPU and investigate the pins and the socket because, well, we booted into Windows, no problem as is. If it ain't fixed, don't broke it. I say we should check the CPU pins anyway. I mean, the cooler's already off. It takes like 10 seconds to pull it out of there. You put me on the spot, aren't you? Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, we'll look at the pins for Raymond's sake. There you go, Raymond, how's she look? No problems at all, pins look nice and straight. Okay, honestly, probably a good thing to check. And the same can be said for the socket, also nice and pretty. Just gonna spread some fresh Thermal Grizzly compound. Yes, it is pink, but it works really well, trust me. And we'll make sure that the cooler is actually secured this time. I flipped it around 180 degrees so that the locking mechanism is on top, just like it should be with the Wraith Stealth and Prism coolers. 
That ain't going anywhere, folks. Nice and tidy. Again, could we have upgraded the cooler? Sure, but I didn't really see the need to, and I think temperatures, regardless, are gonna be much better now because it's properly situated. And while we're waiting for the system to boot back up, which again is gonna take several minutes, uh, I noticed that this CyberPower PC logo has just a bunch of frayed plastic bits hanging from the lettering, and that's because this plastic was never removed. I don't usually do this. I like to save this for the owners, but uh, it's clear they didn't even know this was a thing, so. I'm gonna try my best here to clean it up. A few moments later. There we go, that'll do it. A much cleaner logo, so much better than it looked before. We've been waiting a good while for the owner to respond to our request for the pin for Windows because well, we can't fully verify if fans actually stop spinning until we load into Windows. Maybe there's some sort of program that's halting the RPMs. Uh, but while we're waiting, I think it's best for us to go ahead and do what we intended to do after noticing that this was only on hard disk drive, and that's reinstall Windows on something much faster. So we're gonna upgrade their storage to probably an M.2, maybe like a 512 gig. Of course, we'll keep their hard disk drive in here. Uh, we won't delete the Windows partition, but if they wanna repurpose it, they can maybe use it as like a Steam library or something. And at that point, once we install Windows on the fresh drive, we won't have a pin, then we can load in and see if the fans do in fact stop spinning. Unfortunately, we have to take the graphics card out to get to the one M.2 slot in this motherboard. It is what it is. I have this 256 gig SK Hynix drive, a bit smaller than I was hoping for, but uh, it's still gonna be a massive upgrade, a massive improvement in load times, uh, operating system load times, as well as game load times, if any are stored on here. Uh, but what I would recommend is you keep your primary programs on here, things you'll want to load and open up quickly, and then you can throw your games on the hard disk drive. Just gonna carefully insert the drive like so, and we'll tighten it down with the included Phillips screw. A few moments later, we are in Windows in that new drive, and I've pulled up IDA64, just a quick trial version to make sure that the CPU is not overheating anymore. And I have more to say about that in a few because so far we haven't had any fans shut off. The system hasn't reset, like she mentioned in a, a different part of her description. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and fire up the stress test. I'm also gonna stress the graphics card just to be on the safe side. And let's watch what happens. And it looks like after about 10 minutes of running the Ida64 stress test, our CPU diode temps are touching just above 60 degrees Celsius, which is super, super chilly. And this only reinforces my point about the CPU cooler to begin with. Clearly, the CPU is just fine with this smaller Cooler Master one. Now, communication with the owner has been a bit spotty. I was going to reconnect the hard disk drive. We had to disconnect it for a reason you're about to find out. Uh, and I don't want to risk the system booting by default into the hard disk drive where the original Windows partition is. So I was thinking, okay, we just go into the BIOS and we can change the boot order there. So it defaults to the M.2. The issue there is though, we have a BIOS password to deal with. I've not come across a system in Fixer Flop where we've had a BIOS password, but we do. I'm waiting on the owner to let me know what that BIOS password is. I'm not even sure if she knows that there's a BIOS password enabled. <laughs> So yeah. And to know, in case you're wondering, clearing the CMOS does not remove the password. I thought we'd get lucky there. Now there are other ways to bypass a BIOS password, including resetting everything via the command prompt, which we were about to do. However, Raymond just uh, figured he'd give it a shot and connect the hard drive anyway, and it looks like the BIOS by default is giving preference to the M.2. So that means we actually don't have to do anything in the BIOS. But uh, the problem now is pretty much solved. Temperatures look good. We've remounted the CPU cooler and uh, we've even upgraded the storage so that Windows is just much snappier. Now in the owner's description, they mentioned that fans weren't spinning while Windows was running. We've never seen that uh, since receiving the rig here. You can see up the top of the top clip, the CPU fan is running, the back fan's running, the front fan in the case is running. These two in the graphics card aren't. It's possible they were referring to these, but this is totally normal. Even in an older RX 580 like this, if the card is not not under any load, then there's no need for these to run. And this is an effort to kind of keep the system a bit quieter and reduce the amount of wear on the bearings themselves. And in case you're wondering, yes, we did confirm these fans do spin while the graphics card is under load. And as for programs force closing themselves or windows outright restarting, like we discussed earlier, this was probably the result of the CPU overheating because the cooler in question was not mounted correctly. We caught the CPU cooler issue right away. We knew that was an issue up front because 
because they had discussed how it was a bit loose. Loose is putting it lightly. The thing was just hanging on by the top bracket and that was about it. I could very quickly and easily pull it away with my bare hand. So fixing that and repasting not only lowered CPU temps dramatically, but I also believe resulted in a stable system again without any force crashes or reboots. A very interesting one then. I'm glad that, uh, well, the system didn't suffer any further damage other than just, you know, some occasional reboots from the sound of it. Uh, the CPU still appears to be fine. It's still running nice and cool uh, now that we've fixed the cooler issue. And again, I don't think an upgrade was warranted there because a 1400 doesn't need much in the way of cooling to begin with. In fact, I think the most immediate need for this system was an upgraded storage drive, which is what we took care of here. That M.2 is so much snappier. That's gonna feel like a whole new system, just that one upgrade. So if you're watching this and your current system is running off of just a hard disk drive, please, please, if you can squeeze it into your budget, prioritize a storage drive upgrade first. I, it's just, it's going to be such a huge difference in terms of overall usability for your operating system. I'm sure someone will argue the contrary in the comment section, but I think it's a fairly universally understood point that if you are running Windows solely on a hard disk drive in 2024, prioritize even a two and a half inch SATA drive as the next upgrade. It will make a world of difference Trust me. Other than that, the rig looks healthy again. We cleaned it up just a bit. And of course it is stable, which was the ultimate goal. I just wanna make sure that this thing is plug and play for the owner when they go to pick it up. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a bit short, a pretty obvious issue right out of the gate with the CPU cooler mounting. Other than that, there isn't much more that we could really do here without overhauling major things, right? The entire platform we could make a case uh, could be upgradable at some point down the line. Same with the graphics card. The case, bit of a hot box, but I mean, you're just rebuilding an entire system at that point. And I have to be sparing about what we upgrade in these because we have so many viewers in the Orlando, Florida area who still have issues with their computers. Your viewership, by the way, is such a huge help. It's the reason we can continue doing this for free in our area. So if you have a broken system and you want a chance to have it fixed for the cost of zero dollars and zero cents, check out the form link near the top of this video's description. If you enjoyed watching this one and give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you have not already. Check out relevant links in that description I just mentioned and stay tuned for the next one. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.